Welcome, brothers and sisters. In this program, we're going to discuss the joy of in-person conventions. But first, here are a few updates. After nearly 20 years, on April 26, 2023, the government of Spain approved a historic adjustment to the country's tax exemption law. This decision confirms that Jehovah's Witnesses are a well-known and respected religion in Spain. In addition, the adjustment exempts our brothers from having to pay property tax on theocratic facilities in the country. It also allows individuals in Spain who support the work to obtain a tax deduction on their contributions. We're very grateful for this positive development. What if I told you the work that the ex-Jehovah Witness community has done was so damning and so damaging to this organization for its misuse of children that the UN stepped in to try to save them? Would you believe me? Because it happened a month ago. Conditions of the environments into which peacekeepers are deployed, the power dynamics between the United Nations and humanitarian organizations and the people they've been deployed to protect and serve. But if anything, the issue of sexual abuse seems to be even more widespread amongst the civilian personnel who work for the UN. In 2020, there were 165 allegations of exploitation and sexual abuse, 117 of which were committed by civilians. The overwhelming majority of UN personnel who commit what they call sexual exploitation and abuse in countries around the world are not soldiers and they're not police. They are civilian personnel of the UN who are far more protected from any kind of police investigation or court proceeding than any soldier is. In 2017, Prashanti Tiwari was formally employed by BVHA, an organization contracted by a branch of the UN in India. In an allegation resembling those made against Harvey Weinstein, she reported having been groped and offered career advancement in exchange for sexual favors by a high-ranking UN official. He openly offered me a permanent contract to work with the UN if I gave in to his uh, sexual uh, demand. Now, some secular authorities have drawn wrong conclusions about the involvement of the Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses when an individual commits a serious wrong that violates both civil law and scriptural law. Chris Hayes, you know, on this show, we've been highlighting a disturbing new trend on the right where Republicans and their allies play footsie with fringe conspiracy theorists by attempting to smear Democrats as sympathetic to child abuse. It's a dog whistle to QAnon supporters who believe that the Democratic Party is made up of a Satan-worshipping cabal of pedophiles who run a child sex mm -hmm. trafficking ring. That is their belief. Now, not to be undone, outdone, last night, Republican star Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, who has her finger on the pulse of the Republican base as well as anyone, took the rhetoric a step further, doing away with any pretense and just explicitly calling her political opponents pedophiles. The Democrats are the party of pedophiles. The Democrats are the party of princess predators from Disney. The Democrats are the party... Of, of teachers, uh, elementary school teachers, trying to trying to transition their elementary school age children and convince them they're a different gender. This is the party of, of their identity, and their identity is the most disgusting, evil, horrible things happening in our country. And that's why we have to say it. Now, Green may. Now, there's uh, something that uh, the apostates are uh, talking about and trying to put forward. The media has picked it up. Others have also picked it up. And that is our scriptural position of having two witnesses a requirement for judicial action if there's no confession. Part of the misunderstanding involves our use of the term judicial committee. Now, some erroneously conclude that the congregation is trying to take over the work of the police or the judicial courts, and that's simply not the case as explained in the May 2019 Watchtower, page 7, that our comments are taken from here today. In Deuteronomy 1915, the, 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 the scripture is, is very, very clear. 
It says, no single witness may convict another for any error or any sin that he may commit. On the testimony of two witnesses or in the testimony of three witnesses, the matter should be established. It's very clear, isn't it? You cannot establish a judicial committee based on one witness. So here's the question. When the Christian congregation was established, uh, would the entire judicial process, both civil and scriptural, once again be handled by the older men in the congregation? Well, the answer is no, and for good reason. Now, it's true, the global brotherhood would all be unified under one scriptural law. And that scriptural law would be applied in every congregation, no matter what land, what country they were in. Last week from the Twitter account Amuse, here is the tweet. He said, the United Nations issued this report calling on member nations to decriminalize sex between adults and minors. Should adults be allowed to convince kids to perform sexual acts with them? The UN says yes. And then he links this announcement from the UN. New legal principles launched on International Women's Day to advance decriminalization efforts. So this happened last month. This is not new news, but it's just now, you know, getting into the Twitter cycle. The UN in this announcement wrote, the International Committee of Jurists along with UN aides and the the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights officially launched a new set of expert jurist legal principles to guide the application of international human rights law to criminal law. The quote, eight March principles, which is supposed to be, you know, International Women's Day, March 8th, you're getting the connection, as they are called, lay out a human rights-based approach to laws criminalizing conduct in relation to sex, drug use, HIV, sexual and reproductive health, homelessness, and poverty. Going on, they say the principles developed over five years, which is just shocking that they spent five years creating the most disgusting things imaginable, are based on feedback and reviews from a range of experts and stakeholders. They were finalized in 2022. Initially, the principles focused on the impact of criminal laws prescribing sex and reproductive health and rights, consensual sexual activity, gender identity, gender expression, HIV, non-disclosure, exposure, transmission, drug use and possession of drugs for personal use, and later, based on the inputs of civil society and other stakeholders, criminalization linked to homelessness and poverty were also included. In this announcement, they also go into the laws against transgender people and all about the secular laws governing civil and criminal matters. Well, unlike the scriptural law, secular laws are specific to the land that they govern. For instance, a uh, secular authority's definition of crime and enforcement of penalties are not consistent from land to land. This example, substance abuse. Well, what constitutes illegal uh, abuse? Uh, uh, what's the quantity consumed that would make it illegal? If you're driving uh, uh, some vehicle and you're under the influence, what's the punishment if there is any punishment? You see, the answer to those questions really very widely from country to country. In fact, even from state to state at times. So it's up to the secular governments to determine the penalties and to enforce them. Now it doesn't take a genius to figure out what is going on. We know that this Watchtower organization is being targeted for its misuse of children all around the world, and especially in the United States where the grand jury investigation is going down, looking into them, tying them all the way up to the leaders of the organization. So you would have to say that this is just a coincidence that this organization is under fire for child misappropriation and it just happens that the united nations which they're part of and that they support and they give their money to which jehovah witnesses don't seem to know just happens to be an organization full of people who misuse and abuse other people and do the same criminal activity and now they're trying to legalize that criminal activity now unless you're a fool and you're going to tell me that that's a coincidence i'm sorry it would take a naive, stupid individual to tell me that this is a coincidence. There is no way that this is a coincidence. That this organization just happens to be getting in trouble for the exact same that this UN organization is trying to legalize. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention right here and now is, I will be honest, I did not know that the UN was passing this a month ago. I did not realize this, and I honestly was unaware that the UN had such a terrible problem like that organization with that unique problem of abuse with children. I had no idea that this is a systematic issue with the UN. I knew the UN was bad. I don't trust the UN. I think that they're pieces of crap. I had no idea that they're beyond crap that they're gutter, they're trash, they're shit underneath your shoe. 
they are as bad, if not worse, than Watchtower itself. In conclusion, Jehovah allows the superior authorities, the governments, as it were, to prosecute and administer civil and criminal law. Okay, I want to give you guys a special shout out to uh, Nick's story, the Jehovah Witness Two Witness Rule Misunderstanding EXJW. So, if you are interested in where some of these clippets came from, some of these came from this channel. And I just want to throw out a little thank you. And with that being said, let's get let's keep on going. So, let's kind of digress and let's kind of think about and step back for a moment and then think about all the things that you've learned. So, we know that the Jehovah Witness organization Watchtower is part of the UN. We know the UN is part of this obligation to bring trans into a normal sphere. We know that they want to legalize child abuse. And we know that the representation of the Church of Satan was also being represented by these organizations. So we can see that there's a correlation between the United Nations Watchtower in the Church of Satan. So all three of these organizations are actually financing and pushing for these agendas. And now companies like Target, Budweiser, and other organizations and then companies are jumping on there to get their equity points. And if you guys don't know what equity points are, look into it. Companies are going to be given certain favors by the UN government that they're trying to form in order to gain favor with this new, new, new World Order UN government, you have to have equity points. And so that's why these companies and organizations are doing this. Jehovah Witnesses are no different. Now, the fact that Jehovah Witnesses are getting hammered for child abuse situations like this and that people are focusing on them and that it's going all the way up to the leaders. you got to remember, all these people who are into these things are all knowing one another. They all know one another. There's not like some secret society in each little group. They do this stuff together. They are trying to legalize this to protect their own ass. Because so think about the things that had happened. They are under investigation right now. Jeffrey Epstein got busted. We know that high-ranking individuals were busted with that little incident. And so now what's happening? Well, they're trying to legalize this stuff before all that hits the court systems and it gets out into the public sphere where they're going to try to be like, you know what, we're progressive. You know, the, this is okay. This is what they're doing. You would have to be a fool not to notice. And you'd have to be fooled to think that Watchtower is innocent of this. It would be ridiculous. Tim, what's on your radar? Well, everyone is talking about a new world order. What does that even mean? What will the new world order look like? Who will control it? What has been touted as a right-wing conspiracy theory for the past few decades is now just loosely falling out of the mouths of global leaders everywhere. But before we get to the various world leaders touting a new world order, including Biden, Putin, Xi Jinping, the World Economic Forum, and others, let's talk about the people claiming it's a big conspiracy theory. The Anti-Defamation League categorizes the phrase new world under order under extremism, terrorism, and bigotry. They define it as, quote, a term used to refer to a right-wing conspiracy theory that became popular among anti-government extremists from the 1990s onwards. New World Order conspiracists believe that a tyrannical socialist one-world conspiracy has already taken over most of the planet and schemes to eliminate the last bastion of freedom, the United States, with the help of collaborators within the government. Through repressive measures, as well as manufactured crises such as terrorist attacks and pandemics, the globalist conspirators seek to eliminate dissent and to disarm Americans so that the New World Order can move in and enslave them. New World Order conspiracists also... ...is more than one small country. It is a big idea. A New World Order. There's a time when things are shifting. We're gonna, there's going to be a New World Order out there. And we've got to lead it. That is going to uh, eventually lead to a, a new world order. The shape mutual interest and mutual respect, and our work must begin now. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully, one rooted on four basic principles. 
Secular laws are specific to the land that they govern. For instance, a secular authority's definition of crime and enforcement of penalties are not consistent from land to land.